Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm working on another reel that Scott has uh, brought to me. He found these at a, uh, a local flea market in uh, Southern California. And this one is an Ocean City Brigantine reel. And I believe this is uh, pre-war or right in the war years. Most of the time you can tell that with the handles and uh, the design. This is a direct drive reel. It does not have a star adjuster or any kind of drag. It has a free spool release. When you go to cast, you will be able to throw the spool. This one's very sluggish. When you engage, well, you can turn it and turn the handle. But also, when it's engaged, it, the handle will turn backwards. This is sometimes referred to as a knuckle buster reel, but it's typical of the designs of the 30s and the 40s uh, before the star drag adjusters became pretty much the uh, commonplace and the, uh, the expected standard for one of these ocean trolling reels. The, feature, the reel features a leather thumb brake when you're casting. That's how you controlled the speed of the spool by pressing down or lightening up on it and clamping down on it when you wanted to stop the reel completely. Well, we're going to take this reel apart. We'll show you how it's made, how to service it. Probably will free up the spinning on the spool and uh, well, get it back to Scott so that he can take it fishing or display it or whatever it is that he chooses to do with this. Well, if you like these kinds of videos, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use that notification button. That notification button will tell you when I'm posting videos and you can make a decision as to whether that's a video that you want to see it or not. I work on all kinds of reels. I work on classic and vintage reels like this one. I work on modern reels. I work on fresh water, salt water, and everything in between. Round bait casters, low profile bait casters, spinning reels, trolling reels, you name it. Pretty much work on it. And you're essentially invited into my shop to look over my shoulder and see how it's done so that you can learn how to do it yourself. Well, we're taking off the side plate now. We're removing all of the side plate screws. This reel was missing a side plate screw, so I substituted another one. If you're wondering why one, well, one looks a little bit more shiny than the others, that's because that one was filling the hole. Scott had purchased these at a flea market. When you go to look for fishing reels on the used equipment market, whether it's in a flea market or in Ocean City or, uh, I said Ocean City, I meant eBay and uh, other sites, just make sure that the pictures tell the story. Examine those pictures if you're not doing this in person. Check for visible cracks, missing pieces and parts things that look out of the ordinary and uh, that should be reflected in the price. But we have a clean rail underneath, a lot of interesting little uh, patina on it, we'll call it patina, but there is uh, dried grease in the back side of this spool. We're going to use a little bit of penetrating oil to clean that up. I use the penetrating oil of the day. I don't have a favorite, doesn't matter to me for real cleaning. I guess when you start getting into things like the um, rust busting or seized parts or things like that, maybe it, uh, one may have an advantage over the other. But for the most part, just general cleaning, I'm looking to dissolve the greases and oils. And it seems most every penetrating oil will do that. I'm going to just wipe off the old grease here. That old grease starts to coagulate. You can see how it's kind of frozen on here. That's going to... Uh, well, it's going to get in the way of spinning freely. So when we saw that the, uh, the reel was not spinning freely in free spool, well, this is a, a part of it. It's where this click ratchet and the spool stud go into the bushing on the side case, the uh, little adjuster, and well, it's causing an issue there. We also have a whole host of old greases and oils caked onto the spool. I think that should be removable, but well, it's not, not coming across. That may be, uh, may be frozen on there. And you don't need to remove it because this is a direct drive reel. There is no yoke or yoke springs or anything to release that from the spool. But what we need to do is, well, we need to release the greases and dirt on there. And you can work around that. I'm going to spray this whole piece with the penetrating oil, then I'm going to take a pick and all. It's one of these, you find these in the dollar store or 
Home Depot or places like that. They're just uh, little pointed awls. They serve a multitude of purposes in my shop. They, they have everything from centering holes to well, doing what we're doing here, cleaning slots. And I want to make sure I get all that old grease and, and dirt out of that main gear because just like what we saw on the other side of this spool, this will slow down the performance of the reel. And, and think of it, it's almost like having your tires in mud. They, uh, they'll spin, but they're not necessarily going to spin very well. And we're getting a little bit of movement on that gear. And I think we actually have a clip on the end of that here, holding that in. Yeah. Well, we're going to use the brush next to, to see if we can't brush that out. And I brush that stuff onto my paper towel. That way it doesn't get back into the reel. It doesn't sit on my desk to get into the next reel that I'm working on. I wear a protective glove on my hand to keep the stuff off of my hand to the best I can. And we go. In the end, we try to get all of this stuff done properly. Now I'm going to a small micro screwdriver. Probably not a good idea. What you'll do is you'll wind up wearing the, the sides of the blade. And when you have a very small screw, it needs to be removed. It may not grab it properly, but this happens to be what's at hand. You can also use a uh, blade from a utility knife. You can use a toothpick. You could use other things. All right, let's roll that over so that that doesn't get in the way any longer. And when you're satisfied that you've cleaned all those grooves, check them to make sure that they're all uniform, that they're not bent or chipped or somehow other distorted. And then we can go right back in with some fresh grease. Now fresh grease is going to be pliable, not like that uh, gunk that we got out of there. And it's not unusual when you find a reel at a flea market to find that it is all uh, populated with bunches of old greases and the like, and that's because that reel has probably sat somewhere for quite some time before somebody decided they're no longer going to fish with it. How it got got there is probably a, a wonderful story that if you if you could you would learn from. And uh, well, I always said if reels could talk. This is the setup for this reel. It's kind of interesting. You're going to notice when we move the cam over here, it's going to shift this whole assembly. See how I pulled that whole assembly rolled up, right, rolls up. What that enables that to do, you'll see, is to engage, it's pulled the main gear into position, and then when you release it, it's pulled the main gear down and away from that uh, pinning gear so that it goes into free spool. There's two screws that's holding that assembly on, let's go ahead and take those out. I guess we can remove the the handle here as well. The handle can be removed in one of two ways. It's a nut. You can either use a screwdriver or I believe that's a 3 8 inch nut. Well, it's a screw. It's not a nut. Remove the handle. Now we can remove the two screws that are holding the bridge on. You do not need to remove the upper uh, lever. The only time you probably would want to remove that lever is if the lever was broken. And I guess on this side we need to hold that back nut. Is it is spinning. Okay, that nut's been spinning, so what I'm going to do is grab my micro pliers, see if I can grab that on that side, turn on this, and still keep it in the frame of the camera. Oh, there you go, it's working. Not working as well as I could do it the other way, but uh, well, it's working. This micro pliers, like that, uh, that all we were just talking about there, serves multiple purposes. And you can see that there's a little cup on this side, so that's going to enable that metal bridge to slide in and out without clamping it down. That's going to go into my parts tray. We'll try this one more time on this side. 
see if we can do this with the camera again. We can. There you go. I think. Yeah, there you go. All right. Very good. So that can come out now. And this is an interesting design. So if you uh, were just buying wheels in a, in a flea market to learn how they're made, this would uh, tell you an awful lot about the design and manufacture of the wheel. Okay, I'm not quite sure what this metal piece is here. There's a lever going on underneath. We should be able to push this up. I want to be very careful about this lever. Yeah, that's a spring-loaded lever. I was afraid that there'd be something like that. So this is a good place to take a picture. We don't intend to disturb that, but it's a good place to take the picture and to be aware of that when you're working on the reel. That's a cleanup again. We're going to just try and get rid of this old dried grease in here. We're going to use that penetrating oil to do that. And we're going to use some cotton swabs. Try to keep your cleaning tools to the least abrasive first. You can see there's just a ton of grease in there. And um, in my mind, that's the cause of the poor performance of the reel itself. The reel, this one can uh, be taken fishing again. So Scott was the first one to kind of tell me that there's, there's clubs out by him that uh, do nothing but fish vintage fishing equipment. I think that sounds like so much fun. I haven't seen one of them uh, in my area. That doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means I haven't seen them. Or heard of them. I think I would like to do that. I, uh, when you were growing up, you were always looking for the latest and the greatest and whatever was new. And you know what? Some of this old stuff is more fun than the new stuff. So I think I've kind of become a fan of Knuckle Buster Reels, the, uh, the early bait casters, and uh, some of the designs of the 50s and 60s, the early spinning reels and the like. And uh, not just because. Uh, they have a certain charm to them, but just as equally, because they were very well-made reels, but interesting designs that have stood the test of time. All right, we're going to do the same thing with the main gear now that we did with that pinion gear. Let's spray that down, grab a brush and pull it through onto our paper towel. And that's a good place to tell you if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. I do try to answer the questions as best I can. Maybe you're interested in the history of the reel. Maybe you're interested in uh, getting unstuck on a problem. Maybe you're working on a reel and something has just got you stuck. Well, I'll do my best to uh, try and take you to the completion on that reel if I, uh, if I know it. I'm not going to tell you I know everything. I don't. But to the extent that I do and I can help, well, if it gives a reel a second chance, it, it helps you to become uh, better at your skill of wheel repair, then I'll give it a try. All right, this one's cleaned. Let's do one more thing here because we know we got the same dirt. And you can see why that's spinning poorly. All of this stuff is just a mess. And uh, once you get the mess out of there and you restore it kind of to the way it was made to begin with, it performs more like the way it was designed to perform. Okay, one of the things I didn't do, but I noticed, was I didn't take a picture to make sure that both of those screws that attach are the same screws. They are, but sometimes you need to note if uh, something's different. A little bit of grease onto the post, grease onto your teeth or your main gear, just like we greased up on the pinion gear. Put a little bit there, put a little bit on the shaft where it's going to go through, and then you can seat that pin here onto the bridge. I could ask this frequently. I'm using pen precision reel grease for this. I don't have a preference in fishing reel greases, just like I don't have a preference as far as the penetrating oils. Let's grab this assembly. Make sure you don't disturb the spring mechanism. We didn't take that out. You could, and you could do it without really not getting too far except maybe shooting that spring. Put a little oil in there. You put a little bit of oil onto the eccentric cam as well that's going to move that. Again, you don't need to move that lever unless well, you broke something in it or it's really tight. Then take it apart and clean it. We just put it back in. It's easy enough to do there. Let's go take one of those two screw heads. Bring the main 
screw through. Start the screw on the opposite side here. Pan thread these if you can. These are brass and uh, well if you're not very careful there's a good chance that you're going to uh, ruin the threads, cross strip them or whatever and then that's going to become problematic. Let's do the same on the other side. We have that screw and collar. And you can see already the difference that the cleaning has done here in terms of removing the old grease and getting that out of the way. Again, we'll do the same thing here. And it's, it's, there you go. There's a little bit going on there about centering this. I'm tightening this by hand as best I can. Now I'll grab this that micro pliers and come back for the final turn on this side. And then this one I kind of got stuck. Didn't have the hand strength to do that. So let's go ahead and grab it with the pliers to finish that piece as well. All right, before you put this back together, make sure that it's going up and down. So we're in the up mode, that's the engage, and the down mode, and boy is that moving a lot smoother than it was. Let's grab that handle. And you have the option at this point, you can put the handle on now or you can put the handle on after you attach the side plate. All right, let's all on there, clean up the bench, get rid of these old paper towels. And over our parts tray that has the screws in it. We've already oiled and cleaned the back side of this reel. So let's go. I'm going to bring this to the down position. That's the easy. Oops, I was in the down position. That's the easiest way. You don't have to worry about meshing gears. Bring that in. And then align your side plate holes so that you can install the uh, gears. Just trying to find the right alignment. There it is. You have an odd alignment there with the, the matchup against the posts, but I knew that the one couldn't be it because the the drive gear was way off the, uh, the base. Okay, I like to go north and south, east and west on these. It just makes it easier to control the tension on the case. And once you control the tension on the case, you don't risk having something binding because uh, you tightened way down too much on one side and didn't tighten the other yet. Two more to go. We'll give it a test. While I do that, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody who's made the career choice in public safety. I do appreciate uh, fire and police and rescue and everybody and the jobs they do to keep us safe. Thank you. Well, two more to go. Oops, dropped it. That's not what you want to do with a, uh, a vintage reel. I guess we got enough oil on it now. Here we go. All right, all of the side plate pieces and screws are in place. You can use saddle soap, you can use oil, you can use other things to recondition the leather. Uh, let's give it a run. While we're in free spool, let's, let's see how we do here with the spinning of the spool. Look at that. What an improvement. And all that was simply was getting rid of the dried greases and oils. That thing spins like a top. Beautiful operation. All right, let's move it over to engage the gears turn and that is free and easy. So what I was saying before about cleaning and appreciation for this. I'd love to tie some line on this, put this on a, a, a 10 foot surf pole and give it a throw because I know that spool spinning like that is going to let this fly in terms of surf casting. Well I hope you've enjoyed that. This is the Ocean City Brigantine made in Philadelphia and my um, guess is somewhere in the uh, 1940s. And uh, Scott, you got a beauty here. So uh, enjoy, take a fishing, maybe get in touch with that uh, old tackle and, uh, and uh, reel association, and go put this in a contest, because boy, you'll, you'll hook them with this one. All right, to, to everybody, enjoy your time on the water, enjoy the ho hobby of reel repair, never stop learning, and uh, 
have fun this week. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a nice day.